Mark chapter 5, we'll begin reading in verse 21. The Bible says, And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him, and thronged him. Now look down verse 35. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead, why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult in them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado, and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entereth in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand, and saith unto her, Talitha kumai, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. And straightway the damsel rose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that, they, that something should be given to her to eat. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in your house on this lovely day. Father, we thank you for good jail services this morning. We thank you for a good Sunday school hour. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing. God, the Lord, the congregational singing, the choir singing, the special singing. Thank you for the good testimony. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Now, Father, I pray now, if there be any amongst us who does not understand the goodness of God, who are strangers to the grace of God, I pray now that through the preaching of the Word of God, you'd open the scales off of their eyes and help them to see their need of a Savior. And I pray they'd come and become recipients of the grace of God and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Lord, I pray this morning, if there be anybody here that, that is uh, under heavy load, that is weighted down, that, Lord, you'd come help bear their load. I pray if there's anybody struggling, you would strengthen them. And I certainly pray for the saints of God that have come seeking your face that they would find you. Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd use this unworthy vessel. I pray as Brother Donald has prayed that you'd arrange the atmosphere conducive for worship. I pray that, Lord, you'd speak to our hearts by the powers of hell. And I pray that Jesus would truly be glorified. And Lord, your people would be edified. I pray that hell would be horrified. And I pray that all would be done for your honor and for your glory. Father, we bless you. We praise you for everything. For it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen. And amen. I have a Thaddeus introduction this morning. That means just bear with me. We'll get to the thought in a minute. Uh, years ago I started calling him Thaddeus introductions because after about three points in the introduction he goes to sleep so this will be to, to his benefit okay I want you to notice a few things in these verses I want to get the text down so we can get to the thought notice first of all the degrading request in verse number 22 the Bible says and behold there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue Jairus by name and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly. My dear friends, this man Jairus is a ruler of the synagogue. No doubt he may even be in line to be high priest one day. But this man who is uh, 
won the favor of the Jews and has respected the Jews is now degrading everything that he has stood for and believes uh, in order to come and bow before the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, there has been a traumatic event that has befallen him and his family and can I say, he's tried every doctor, he's tried every method. Uh, they have prayed, no doubt they have fasted. And all to no avail, they have gotten no help. And he comes to the end of the rope and realizes all that he has trusted in will not take him to where he needs to go. But there is one walking amongst them. One that he has witnessed firsthand touch and change people's lives Amen. and so he degrades himself and humbles himself and comes and bows before the Lord Jesus Christ notice the reason he has a daughter who is dying we find again in verse 23 and uh, uh, the Bible says and he besought him greatly saying my little daughter lieth at the point of death I pray thee come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and that she shall live. Uh, can I say that there is a known statistic that the unchurched uh, will not come to Jesus until some traumatic event happens in their life. Uh, there's a sickness, there's a death, there's a divorce, uh, there's a great financial need. They come to the place uh, where they know they cannot help themselves. Uh, no one else around them can help them. Uh, they must look to one who can change the situation. Uh, and friend, uh, let me help you. You don't have to get that low. You don't have to wait that long. Uh, but there is one who can help you and his name is Jesus. Uh, Jarius had seen uh, Jesus heal others. Uh, Jarius had seen uh, Jesus do miraculous things. Uh, and here he comes and confesses his need. Uh, and he puts his faith in the only one that can help him. Uh, he said, if you'll lay hands on her, she shall live. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, we see a degrading request. We see the daughter dying. Now notice an untimely delay. We did not read the verses, and I'll not read them uh, uh, now for sake of time. Uh, Brother Thad's about halfway to his nap. Uh, uh, but we do find uh, in verses 25 through 34, he deserves it. He's a Steelers fan, huh? In verses 25 through 34, you find that as Jesus uh, is going with Jarius, they're on their way to Jarius' house, uh, we find uh, there's an interruption. Uh, uh, the Bible said there was much people that had gathered around him. They're enthronging him. Uh, everybody wants to get to Jesus. Uh, and there is a woman that has an issue of blood. Uh, she has had this disease for 12 years. Uh, the Bible lets us know uh, uh, she has spent all that she's had. She's been to many physicians uh, and her uh, condition did not get better but grew worse. Uh, and she said, if I I can just touch the hem of his garment. Uh, and Brother Donald, I don't know how she got to him. Uh, there's a crowd of people, a throng of people. Uh, but I do know, uh, Brother Brian, she had to get down uh, very low to get down to the hem of his garments. Uh, I preached one time a message on the hem of him. Uh, and if you can ever get to him, uh, and she made her way to him, and in the midst of it all, uh, Jesus stopped and said, Who touched me? Uh, his disciples said, Lord, there's a throng of people. They're all touching you. Uh, and you ask who touched you? Uh, uh, listen, they were touching him uh, uh, for personal satisfaction and gain. Uh, she touched him by faith uh, and virtue went out of him. Uh, and that woman was made whole from the very hour. Uh, but can I say all that took some time. And here's Jarius. What about me? I'm the one that came to you. I'm the one that bid you to my house. Uh, we were headed that way. Uh, uh, why the delay? Uh, yeah. Let me remind you, God never, ever does anything on our timetable. Right. He always does it on his timetable. And by the way, he's always right on time. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Well, we see an untimely delay. Then we get devastating news. Look with me, if you will, in verse 35. And while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. 
Why troublest thou the master any further? Devastating news. Can you imagine how his heart sunk within him? He's done degraded himself and reached out to the one that he knew could help and this sorry no good woman got in the way. Can you imagine all the emotion? And now it's too late. Devastating news. We find in Job chapter 3, Job said, The day of my worst fears came upon me. In Job, it tells us, And there came a day. Friend, we don't know what a day brings forth. Everything can be well. Uh, everything can be running well at your house. Uh, everything can be well in your life. Uh, but on the morrow, things may change. Right. Amen. We find devastating news. Now look at the unfeasible demand. Look at verse 36. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. I don't know about you, but that's some odd words for a fellow that just uh, heard that his daughter died. Right. Amen. Jesus gives him an unfeasible demand. He said, I know you just heard your daughter die. I know that sounds like it's final. He says, be not afraid. Only believe. I don't know about you, but I'd have a real problem with that be not afraid part. So don't fear. Only believe. Hmm? In other words, he said, you come this far, why don't we go the rest of the way? Yeah. Be not afraid. Only believe. Then notice, if you will, the distraught gathering down at the house. Look at verse number 38. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult... And them that wept and wailed greatly. Now, I don't know how they got a house full that quick. Maybe they came from a big family. Maybe they were very popular in the neighborhood. But there was a house full of people. And evidently they'd been there for a while praying. They'd been there for a while trying to comfort the family. And all of a sudden the news comes out of the bedroom that she died. And everybody there's tore up. They're weeping and wailing greatly. Can I say it's one thing to sob? It's one thing to cry. It's another thing to weep. And it's a far another thing to wail. I mean, when people wail, that comes from the gable end of their soul. And this whole crowd is absolutely destroyed. They're distraught. And then walks Jesus. Hmm. Uh, now notice the unbelieving disdain. Look at verse 39. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel's not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. Now, first of all, let me say, they must not have had the same confidence in Jesus as Jairus did. Right? Huh? But notice how quickly their weeping and wailing turns into laughter. Yeah. Right. That's good. It's almost like they turned it off like a spigot. Yeah. And then they break out in hilarity. Jesus wasn't being a comedian. He was just telling them the truth. And by the way, from God's perspective, everybody's just sleeping when they die. Because you see... The only thing that dies is these old vessels of clay. The soul lives forever. Some sleep in Christ. Some sleep without Christ. And they'll perish forever and ever. And their sleep is not comforted, but miserable. Now notice, if you will, the parents who become dumbfounded with delight. Look at verse 42. And straightway the damsel rose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years. And they were astonished with great astonishment. Hmm? Can I say, 
There's no one that's ever been touched by Jesus that stayed the same. Amen. Hmm? But the parents were dumbfounded. They were just beyond amazed that even after she died, Jesus was the answer to their problem. Now, I want to set the table for the thought. I want you to imagine the mother. Now, Jarius has watched his daughter get to the point where she's about to die. They've tried everything. They've sought the greatest prayer warriors in all of Judaism. Uh, uh, he's prayed. No doubt they've offered sacrifice. Uh, I, I, no doubt they have fasted. Uh, no doubt they've called every physician. Uh, they've tried everything. Uh, and finally, uh, something down deep inside uh, of Jariah says there's only one real answer. Uh, and he's out there walking around. His name is Jesus. Uh, and Jarius looks at his mama and his wife says, Mama, I'll be back soon. I've got to go get Jesus. And he leaves out. And here's the mother. Can you imagine as the time passes by? We don't know how long he's gone. We don't know if it's minutes or hours. I, t I tend to think it might be more the latter. Uh, 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 he's gone. Uh, uh, and uh, she doesn't have a, a cell phone. She don't have text messaging. Uh, uh, she's just waiting. Uh, she's sitting there holding that darling baby of hers. Uh, Twelve-year-old sweet little girl. Uh, as life is beginning to drain from her. Uh, and she's waiting uh, and waiting uh, and waiting. Uh, wondering uh, if the answer's ever going to come. Uh, wondering uh, if her is ever going to get home uh, wondering uh, if Jairus is going to actually bring Jesus with him uh, uh, she's sitting there waiting uh, then she begins to wonder uh, can you just envision her uh, she's wondering uh, are all those stories about Jesus true uh, can Jesus touch the sick and make them whole uh, can Jesus touch the blinded eyes and make them see uh, can Jesus change uh, every situation does he really do miracles uh, like everybody's saying she's wondering uh, you may be here today uh, and may be wondering why we rejoice uh, when the name of Jesus is mentioned uh, why we rejoice when songs about him are sung uh, why we are so fanatical about coming to church uh, and expounding on the Bible uh, and reading about Jesus uh, is he really uh, uh, the great God of glory uh, can he really change lives uh, can he really save sinners uh, can he really do uh, miraculous things in this day and age. Uh, friend, you can wonder uh, till the cows come home. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, we have uh, uh, example and witnesses from the Word of God. Uh, yes, it's true. Uh, hey, uh, look around. Anybody that's ever been lost here, been saved by the good grace of God, uh, they'll tell you it's the best thing that ever happened to them. Uh, hey, yes, Jesus is able to save. Yes, he's able to change lives. Uh, but this mama's wondering, she's waiting, and then she begins weeping. She's weeping while she's holding her daughter, clinging to life, and then she's weeping uncontrollably and begins to wail as life has slipped away from her daughter. I'm going to preach on this thought for, for a little bit this morning. I'm going to preach on help is on the way. Whoa, help is on the way I don't know where you're at don't know what you're facing don't know how grave the situation don't know how dark the sky may be don't know how high the waters may be flifting don't know how bare the bank account may be don't know how bare the cupboards may be but I can tell you on the authority of what God's laid on my heart today help is on the way uh, friend uh, don't be disturbed uh, don't be distraught uh, don't lose hope uh, help is on the way uh, can I say first of all this morning uh, help is on the way uh, for the lost uh, if you're here today uh, and you're still in your sins uh, you're lost uh, 
without God. You're just groping through this world, trying to make ends meet, wondering if the stories are true. I've got good news. Help is on the way. He's coming to where you're sitting this morning, and he's going to tell you it's true, and he's going to tell you you need to be saved from your sins. He's going to tell you just believe on the Lord. Just reach out to him because he's reaching down to you. Hey, the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved today. You can have your sins washed away today. Hey, though they be red like scarlet, they can be white as wool. Hey, you can have your life changed today. You can become a new creature in Christ Jesus today. Help's on the way. All you got to do is want help. And you'll find help in Jesus. Can I say help's on the way for the low? You may have drug in here this morning. You may be so low, you got to look up to see a snake's belly. I mean, you may be low. Or you might have a smile on your face, but you're just putting on. Deep down inside, your soul is aching. And you're low. You might be downtrodden. I've got news for you. Help's on the way. Amen. You may be depressed this morning. I've got news. Help's on the way. You don't have to stay downtrodden. You don't have to stay depressed. Uh, matter of fact, if you let the Lord help you, you'll be too blessed to be depressed. Uh, uh, you may be filled with disappointment this morning. Uh, uh, I've got good news helps on the way. If you look at man, you'll get disappointed. Uh, you get to looking around at people, you'll get disappointed. Uh, you get to put your faith uh, in companies uh, and in businesses uh, and in schools uh, and in people of authority. Uh, you You'll get disappointed, uh, but I've got good news. Helps on the way. Uh, there's one that has never failed. Uh, there's one that will never fail you. Uh, there's one that will never forsake you. Uh, he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother, uh, and you'll never be disappointed in him. A uh, uh, friend, listen to me. Uh, I've been saved 50 years, uh, and I've seen a lot in these 50 years. Uh, but I can honestly stand before you today, uh, even though folks have let me down. Uh, even though Christians have let me down. Uh, even though preachers have let me down. Uh, Jesus has never disappointed me. Uh, he's never failed. Uh, never let me down and he'll never let you down. Uh, helps on the way. Uh, you may be here and you may be in debt. Worst debt's a sin debt. But you may be in debt up to your ears. I've got good news. Helps on the way. You know God's got a financial plan. And if we follow God's financial plan, God will bless you. He said, prove me now if I'll not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. Helps on the way. You see, God's got the answers for every, th every facet of our life. And oh, if we'll just do things God's way, he can't help but bless us. Can I say this morning, uh, you may be overwhelmed with doubt. I've got good news. Helps on the way. Yes. The one that will mm, dispel all doubt, yes. his name is Jesus. Huh? He told that fellow, be not afraid, only believe. And I can't help but think on the steps back to his house as the words are still ringing in his ears, trouble not the master, your daughter's dead. Yeah. I can't help but thinking he's doubting. Might not have been great doubt, but he had some doubt going on. Because huh? he's made of the same stuff we're made out of. Yes. He's human. Yes. We got down there, even though he's doubting, the Lord still healed his daughter. Amen. She rose from the dead. Uh, can I say, help's on the way, yes. even if you're full of doubt. You may be lost today, help's on the way. Right. You may be low today, help's on the way. Can I say, you may be lonely today. We live in a world where people can be in a room full of people and yet feel all alone. Can I say that it is a human trait that we all want to be loved and we all want to be accepted. And we try our best to conform to societies and conform to people so we will be loved and accepted. 
And a lot of people in all of that, they're not really who they really are inside and they feel lonely. Can I say, the Lord loves you just as you are. Amen. He made you and he cares for you. Can I say that he's often showed up to help the lonely. Amen. I'm reminded in Revelation chapter 1 verse number 9. The Bible says, I John who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. You say, what is, what's going on? John, the great apostle. Uh, John, uh, the disciple whom Jesus loved. Uh, John is now an old man. Uh, he's the only disciple that died a natural death. Uh, oh, they tried to kill him. They tried to boil him in oil and it didn't kill him. Uh, and they decided, well, we'll, we'll send him out to this deserted island uh, and he'll go out there and he'll die uh, alone on that island. Uh, well, they did. They put him on this isle called Patmos uh, and he's out there. There's no other people around uh, and he's out out there uh, for the word of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, he's out there for doing right. Uh, he's out there uh, because he lived uh, a good, saved life uh, and he proclaimed Jesus Christ a lost and dying world. Uh, they thought that was the end of old John, uh, but he said it was in the Lord's day. Uh, he was in the spirit on the Lord's day and up behind him he heard a voice uh, as a trumpet. Uh, he goes on to say, uh, it's the Lord. He said, I'm he that was dead, and I'm alive forevermore and have the keys to death and hell. Hey, they thought John was alone, but hey, in the midst of his loneliness, help was on the way, and the Lord showed up, and the Lord gave him the revelation, and hey, we're still hearing from old John that they thought they did away with, all because in the midst of his loneliness, his help was on the way. Amen. Help's on your way too, friend. The Lord said, cast all your care on him for he careth for you. He's concerned when nobody else seems to be concerned. He cares when nobody else cares. He loves you, friend. And you are accepted in Christ. That don't mean he'll accept sin, but he accepts sinners. Oh, what a blessing. I thought about this, helps on the way for the lost, for the low, for the lonely, but also for the languishing. Those that are feeble with sickness. God still touches feeble bodies. And can I say this morning that from a cold to cancer, he'll heal you, help you, or hold you. Ah, oh, if you're feeble with sickness, help's on the way. If you're here this morning, you're fearful with, with sorrows, help's on the way. I'm reminded, I won't read it, but over there in Genesis 21, you know the story of Abraham and Sarah. The Lord promised in their old age he'd give them a child. Abraham believed God. Sarah not, didn't believe Abraham. She's saying, look, old man, you're too old and I'm too old. So Sarah went and got her handmaid, her slave, Hagar, to go in and be with Abraham. She conceived, a child was born named Ishmael. Then Sarah conceived because God doesn't lie. Right. Amen. And Sarah bears forth Isaac, but Sarah is jealous of Hagar and Ishmael. Now the whole situation is because she didn't have faith, but she's jealous of Hagar and Ishmael. So she sends them away. She tells old Abraham, Hagar's got to go. Now, I don't know about you, but when mama in the house says something's got to go, it's, it's hitting the dump. Right. It's gone. Hmm? So he sends her away with a little bit of bread and a bottle of water. That's real generous, generous wasn't it? <laughs> I mean, he's, he's got more wealth than, than, than a whole community could have. But he sends her away with just a little. 
And she gets out there not knowing where she's going. And the bottle runs out, the bread's gone. And she can't bear the thought of watching her baby die. So she goes and she lays him in some bushes. And she goes over to lean up against a rock, I believe it is, thinking that's it. She's going to die. He's going to die. Can you imagine the fear? All this came upon Hagar, not to her asking for it. Amen. It all comes upon her, and here she is fearful and sorrowful. Her heart's breaking. Her little baby is going to die. But you know, God can't break his promises. And you know, God promised Abraham that he was going to make of his seed a great nation. And even though Sarah got all mixed up in it, and even though there's a lot of flesh involved in it, Abraham did conceive a son from Hagar uh, named Ishmael, uh, and God's promises are true, uh, and God uh, spoke to Hagar uh, and said, Hey, uh, I'm going to make of your son a great nation. Uh, all of a sudden she looked and there's a fountain open. Uh, she had enough water to drink, uh, enough water to sustain her for her journey. Uh, listen, you may be fearful, uh, you may be sorrowful, uh, but there's a God in heaven who hears your cries, my dear friend, uh, and help is on the way. Amen. By the way, Ishmael is a great nation. All those Arab nations over there in the Middle East, that's Ishmael. God always does what he says he's going to do. Hmm. Matter of fact, Israel came from Isaac. That's why they've always been at war. Ishmael feels like they got slighted on their birthright. And so they're constantly warring over there. And the uh, peace of the Middle East is the biggest laughing stock in the world. There won't be peace till the Prince of Peace, the Lord, comes back and sits on the throne of David. Right. But can I say, the fearful and sorrowful helps on the way. To the feeble, sickness helps on the way. To those that have fallen in sin helps on the way. So preacher, I, I'm saved, but I messed up. I'm sorry you messed up. But the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, that if we'll confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus will forgive you of your sin. Amen. The curse of falling into sin is you've got to learn to forgive yourself. Jesus will forgive you. Helps on the way. You don't have to stay in your sin. Listen, I know it would be hard to find, but if we could find a mud puddle out there and use to step in it, get your foot all messed up, you don't have to leave your foot in a mud puddle. You can get it out, get it cleaned up, and go on down the road. Well, when it comes to the Lord, He wants to clean you up, put you back on the path called straight, and send you on down the road. Huh? Amen. You don't have to stay in your sin. Helps on the way. I thought about this this morning for the lukewarm. Helps on the way. And listen, I love you, church. I love you as your friend and I love you as your pastor but some of you have grown a little cold uh, them songs we heard from the youth choir by the way youth choir I've heard you sing better than that some of you gotten a little cold them songs sung by the special but he's been good we should have kicked the walls out of this place. But some of you sat there and wasn't even stirred because you've grown cold. Do you know Revelation 3, the church of Laodicea in their great sin, it wasn't because they were cold and it wasn't because they were hot. It's because they were lukewarm. Some of you are living right. You're reading your Bible. You're praying. You're doing everything right. You're witnessing. But you're just going through the motions. It's because you don't have a fire burning inside. you just gotten lukewarm. Hips on the way. You don't have to stay with lukewarm. Can I say that's a miserable place? It's miserable to get all cleaned up, come to church, and just sit here. Not feel anything or enjoy anything. God help us. We just get lukewarm. 
Listen, I get it. We live in a chaotic world. You work at chaotic places around chaotic people. huh? And if I see one more Sherrod Brown, Bernie Marino commercial, I'm going to die. <laughs> I was watching football last night. They went to a break because somebody got hit, and I'm not exaggerating, five straight Sherrod Brown, Bernie Marino commercial. I'm thinking, okay, I get it. Neither one of them is any good. They're crooks. So let's move on. I understand we deal with pressure. We deal with problems. You're constantly inundated with things of this world. And a lot of times just getting to come to church is a release and a relief. Amen. But if you're not careful, you let all the chaos of this world and all the sin of this world and all the goofy things of this world cause you to grow cold. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cause you not to care. Cause you to just go through the motions. I got good news helps on the way. Amen. And then I thought about this lastly. For those looking for his return, yeah. helps on the way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Luke 21, 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, what things? Everything's going on in the world right now. All the chaos. Do you realize since World War II there's been a hidden agenda to make this world a one world government? Do you realize we are closer than ever before to have a one world government? Amen. And if somehow they cheat and steal this election and they put in Kami Kamala, yeah. we'll be a one world government, yes. one world religion. That's where we're headed. Amen. That's what, She's openly said that. She said it last week, that everybody should have everything in common. That's socialism. That's communism. Mm -hmm. Huh? America's built on uh, uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You can be whatever you desire to be. If you work hard enough, you can have it in America. Not in Venezuela. Not in China. Yeah. Not in Russia. And that's what they want us to be. Where the elites have it all, and the commons have nothing. That's what it's all about. And they're headed that way. Can I say, when you see these things begin to come to pass when there's a great falling away when wickedness abounds you see all these things when perilous times shall come then look up and lift up your heads yes. for your redemption draws yes. nigh friend he's coming Amen. the Lord's coming You're and right. he's coming soon he's coming sooner than we think right. yeah. huh? we may not even make it to the election you understand that don't you right he is coming soon. Uh, Psalms 121 but says this, uh, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Uh, friends, you need to keep looking up. He's coming. Uh, it could be any day. He's going to split the eastern sky. Uh, uh, the trump of the archangel is going to sound. Uh, hey, uh, uh, there's going to be that great shout from glory. Uh, come up hither. Uh, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And Louis which will remain in life. Uh, shall be caught up together with them and so shall we ever be with the Lord uh, he's about to take his church out of here neighbor uh, keep looking up helps on the way uh, I believe whoever's going to blow the trumpets wet in their lips I believe whichever archangel is going to shout clear in his throat and I believe the Lord's already about to step out on the clouds to come and get us helps on the way this whole message I've been telling you helps on the way. If you need help, now it's time for you to get help. Listen, the Lord's here. The Lord's spoken to your heart. The Lord knows what you stand in need of. The question really is, are you going to be like Jarius, Where you're willing to junk everything that's got you to this point and come to Jesus and get help. Are you willing to be helped? Because help's on the way. Yeah. He's here. He's willing to help you. Now, I'll say this about the Lord. He's a gentleman. Mm -hmm. He never forces himself on anybody. Right. Jarius came to him and fell at his feet. The lady with the issue of blood fell at his feet. Yeah. Can I say, anybody can get help, but you've got to come and fall before him and ask for it and he'll help you. Are you willing to surrender your pride? 
Are you willing to surrender whatever preconceived notion you have that it takes to be helped? All you got to do is come. He said, the spirit says come. The bride says come. Huh? All you got to do is be willing to come to Jesus and you'll find the help that you need. No movement, no help. You move to him, all you got to do is take one step in his direction and you'll find the help that you need. Help's on the way. Help is here. Will you be helped? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song. As they come to get a song, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Thank you for helping Jarius and his family. Thank you for still helping families today. Lord, I don't know anybody's heart, but I know you wouldn't give me this message if folks didn't need help. So, Father, I pray. I pray for those in our midst that are lost. I pray you'd convict them of sin. Lord, where they hate sin so much, they'd be willing to turn from it and turn to the Lord. Come get some help. Get saved from their sin. I pray for those that are low, that, Lord, they'd come and let you lift them. I pray for those that are languishing, that, God, they'd come and let you help them. I pray for the lukewarm, that they would come, and, Lord, you'd set a fire in their soul. God, I pray uh, for those that are looking, Lord, you'd keep them looking. And for every other need that is under the uh, uh, sound of my voice this morning, they'd come to Jesus and get some help. Somebody might be falling in sin. God, help them to come and get restored and have the joy of thy salvation restored unto them. God, speak to hearts now. Get glory to your name. Bless this invitation. Save that one nearest tell. Father, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.